our opening prayer this morning. Man, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Yes, Lord, I want to go. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just come before you this morning, God. Oh, God, saying, yes, we want to go, Lord. Where you are, Lord, we want to be also. So, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for blessing us to come out on today, Lord. Thank you first, oh God, for waking us up this morning, oh God. But we know it wasn't the alarm clock, oh God, but it was you, oh God, who breathed the breath of life into us yet again. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Father God, as we come before your presence this morning, God, we just ask you, Lord, to shine your searchlight, oh God, on our hearts, oh God. Lord, if there's any wicked way found in us, oh God, anything in us, Lord, that displeases you, God, Lord, we ask you to take it out, oh God. Oh God, help us, oh God, to, to be pleasing in your sight, oh God. Show us everything wrong, oh God, so we can get it right, oh God. So we can lay it at your feet, Jesus. So we can ask you to cover us yet again in your blood, Jesus. And forgive us, Lord, for every fault, for every sin, oh God, for every shortcoming. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for forgiving us, Lord, for you said in your word that if we just ask you, God, for forgiveness, Lord, that you are faithful and that you are just, you will forgive us for our sins, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, God, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for making us holy, God. Thank you for making us righteous before you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to lift up holy hands in your sanctuary today, God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, and we're here, oh, God, to give you praise, God, to give you glory, God, and to give you honor, oh, Lord. And we just ask you, oh, God, Lord, to be in our midst on today, God. Accept our praise, oh, God. Oh, God, be glorified in this place today, Lord. Have your way, God, in the midst of your people on today, Lord. Move how you want to move, oh, God. Lord, have your way, God. And, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to bless each family that's represented here, oh, God. Bless each family that's on the road here at Mount Olive, oh God. Lord, light a fire in their hearts, oh God. Renew up that love for you, oh God, and for assembling themselves together, oh God, in your presence, oh God. That they might come, oh God, and assemble, oh God, to bless you, God, to give you all the praise that you're worthy of, oh God. Lord, we ask that you look upon the sick, Lord, in the hospitals, whether they be in their homes, oh God, wherever they are, oh God. Remind them, oh God, that you are a, a healer, oh you are the healer, oh God, and remind them to lift up their eyes unto the hills from which cometh their help, knowing that the help comes from you, God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And Lord, we say thank you, Lord, for every touch of healing, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for every renewing, oh God, in these limbs, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to look upon those in nursing homes, God, look upon those in prisons, oh God, or anywhere that your people may be, oh God, and they can't assemble themselves together in worship today. God, come in right now, Lord, move by your spirit, God, even where they are, oh God. Remind them, God, who you are, oh God, and remind them who they are, oh God, Lord, and give them hearts of repentance, oh God, hearts of humility, God, that they might lift you up, God, even where they are right now, oh God. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for meeting us right where we are, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we are a people, Lord, that desire to praise you, God, and that, that desire to please you, God. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you, that being, for being that God who supplies our every need, for being that God who makes a way when there seems to be no way, for being that God who gives us peace, oh God, in the midst of turmoil. We say thank you, Lord. Thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And next I'll be reading from Proverbs 22 and 6. Why don't we all go? 
Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word, and God bless our you. And I will be doing our affirmation of faith. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only the infallible word of God. We affirm our faith in God. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existing in three persons God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ and his return. We affirm our faith in repentance. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood. We affirm our faith in salvation. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for the person of salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to the Lord's prayers. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, was given to the leaders of that Jesus. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, and I was given to the Christians to be able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. 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 Next, we will have our testimonies and or songs. Does anybody have a testimony or song this morning? children have a testimony to say how their first week of school went. You can say it went well. You can say, you can just say that, hey, it's going to be a challenging year, but pray for me or something. Any, oh, you do. Hi, I'm Avea, and my first week of school was very great. Yeah. Anybody else? I am a meal, and my first week of school was good. testimony and I'd like to thank all of you when I request for my brother Victor to be on the prayer list I want to thank all of you for praying for him because uh, uh, let's see I think it was Wednesday Wednesday me and my sister Yolanda went up to the hospital to see him and he wasn't looking too good right but then Saturday, yesterday, I went up there to look to uh, see him. Matter of fact, my sister Yolanda, she's out of town. And I went up to the hospital to see my brother Victor, and he looked real good. Amen. I like, I like, man, them prayers. God, God is listening to them prayers. Amen. Because now my brother Victor, he wide, he wide a wolf. I just, just as big as don't know what. Yeah. And he's, he's not talking yet because he had a trick in his mouth. He's not talking yet, but he's writing. He let me what, he tell me what, how, what he feel by writing down, you know, on a piece of board, paper. So I thank God for that. Amen. 
but like I said, I thank God for all the prayers. Uh, you know, I had a, uh, not just that one, that testimony from my brother Victor. I have a, a testimony. I have a testimony. Uh, let's see. You know, God, God, he, he has a way to bring bringing you down back to your level where you're supposed to be at instead of being on cloud nine all the time. Uh, one day I was uh, talking to my uh, to one of my son's mother. This was, this was a while back. I was a week prior before I got stabbed six times. A week prior. And I was talking to her and this is why I was telling her that uh, it's going to sound crazy, but this, this, this is why I told her. This my main frame, uh, my mind frame was back then. I told her that I couldn't get, I couldn't get whooped, right? They fight me. I said, I couldn't get, I can't get whooped. Uh, I said, all the fights I had, I won, I won them all. And I said, I said, even if I got jumped on, uh, I still wouldn't lose. I was telling her all this, just, just bragging, boasting of myself. And then, and I even told her, I said, even if I did get shot or stabbed, I wouldn't die. I'd come, I might be out for a while, but I'd come back. I was telling her all this stuff. And then a week later, I get stabbed six times. I get stabbed six times, almost lost my life. And then, and now, I can stand here and I say, I thank God Amen. For, for taking that high minus, my mind, how it was, and brought it down. Now I'm humble. I'm humble. I love, I love everybody. I don't have no envy in my heart. I don't have no hate in I just love, I just love people. You know, like the book says, Love thy neighbors, and that's why I, I love it. I love all. Uh, just there, I was uh, just there. Uh, some of the fellas that I used to hang out with when I was out there in the world, you know that group. Something I talk about when I was out there in the world. I saw I saw one of them, and he walked up to me, and, and you know we greeted greet each other with a handshake. But he had wanted to do the handshake that we always used to do when I was in the world. You know, that, you know, that we group of fellas out there hanging out with, we had our own handshake. And he had wanted to do that. But I stopped him quick. As soon as I saw that finger coming up, first we go like this, and as soon as I saw that finger coming up, <laughs> I smashed it. And I said, no, no, man, I don't do that no more. Yeah. I, I said, I don't do that. And he looked at, he, he looked at me like something, something wrong, like I had a problem. But I told him, I said, I just looked at him. And this is what he told me. He said, once, uh, you know, that group of fellas that I was with me, he said, once, once a, you know, I'm, I'm going to just say the word, once a Lord, always a Lord. And I just told him, man, you need to come over this side. You know, you need to come over on this side because claiming that stuff almost got me killed. Yeah. You know, and the only thing I had was problems. Every day, problems. Making enemies that I didn't even know they were my enemies. You know? But I just thank God for Jesus. Hey. You know, I, I thank him for I thank him for his grace. Yeah. You know, and I can, you know, stand up here today and, and talk about it. But uh, I think I've been up here long enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and take my seat. Hey. But uh Y'all continue to have a blessed day. And like I said, I thank God each and every day he wakes me up in the morning. Did you did I see somebody saying back there?
I do have a quick question for the kids. Do you guys know the reason why we do testimony service at all? Do you? What? Kind of? Okay. So first of all, we do testimony service to just tell the goodness of the Lord and what God has done for us. Um, also, those testimonies are used to show people the evidence of God and the blessings that we receive by believing and all that. I hate to say that stuff. All those things that, you know, come with this life. So if you see us, like Brother Jimmy over there, you see him, hey, hey, guys, come on. I'm trying to put him, put him away. So if you see Brother Jimmy over there always testifying because he's happy. He's happy about what God has You know. And then one of those things where you listen to his stories and then if you listen closely sometimes, you can say, hey, you know, I remember Brother Jimmy, as you get older, I remember Brother Jimmy used to talk about this way of life, that way of life. You know, as my grandfather, Elder Broyles, always says, you know, you know, why buy experience when somebody can give it to you? He's giving you the experience. You know, he's giving God things, but if you listen closely enough, he's giving you lessons of, of life or in others. Uh, you know, um, Mother Broyles, and she has a really, really big testimony and a lot of other testimonies like hers around the world. So that's the reason why we have testimonies in our church. You know, to give God thanks for the good he has done to show, you know, sometimes even with us believers here, it's to just confirm that, hey, God still says hi, and God is still doing what he said he will do. All right? Amen. So that is the reason why you have testimonies. Um, does anybody else have any testimonies this morning or any songs? You have another one? Okay, real quick. God, thank you for healing us. What was that? God, thank you for healing us. Oh, healing us, okay. Yeah. Mir says, thank you for healing us. So, all right. So, if we don't have any other testimonies, we're going to move forward with our praise and worship service.
before you too long because I think you guys have this down. You guys know what we're going to talk about? Yes. Okay, first, what's our theme for this year? Let everybody know. Go ahead and tell me. Chosen to be on God's team. What? Chosen to be on God's team. So we talked about some, over the past few weeks or so, we've talked about different people that were chosen to be on God's team. Who are some of the people that we've talked about? Jonah. Jonah. Who else cares? Mm-hmm. Noah and Dale. You just gonna name them all? Mm-hmm. Yep, Jonah. Okay. So how about what we've talked about some people that were chosen to be on God's team, but most recently we thought about teams and what did we think about when we when we think about different teams that we go to watch them play different sports? What did we think about? Like Sanius? They help each other, Hamea. Yeah, they have their, but what do what do we call what what these players wear? What do they what do they wear? Cares. Well, it's the, um, the mm -hmm. And pads. Oh, let's let somebody else answer. I know you got all the answers, but we got to give some other people a try. Come here. Um, helmets. helmets. Good job. Anybody else? So what do we, they wear cleats, they wear pads, they wear helmets. And what did we say these football players, why do they wear all this stuff? Zion? To be safe. To be safe. What's is? Yep, to protect themselves, right? To protect their bodies. So as a member of God's team, what does God tell us to put on? What is our uniform? Go ahead and tell me. The armor of God, okay? So let's go over them. For those of us, I'm sure most people here know what some of them are. Some people might have trouble remembering all of them. Avea, give me one. One. <laughs> Belt of truth. Okay, Zion, give me another one. Helmet of salvation. Amir? Sword of the spirit. Very good. What else do we got? That was, what was that? One, two, three? We got a couple more. Like St. Anne's? Yeah, boots of readiness, or what else did we call them? Boots of peace, good news, the gospel. Okay, what else we got? I know we're kind of going out of order, so we're getting mixed up. Coriana? Breastplate of righteousness, good. I think we might have one more. Who remembers what it cares? You think you got it? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Uh, Amy, 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 what is it? Um, There's one left. Help him out. <coughs> Shield of faith. Good job. So how many was that? One, two, three, four. Was it six? No. Was that all? We got all of them? Yeah. All right. Should we go over them again? One more time all together. We'll start at the top. Help me of salvation. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Sword of the Spirit. Shield of the Good job. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, what these things mean and why we are supposed to wear them, okay? Let me get my notes here. So I've got a few, but we're going to have some of our friends come up and read. Ooh, do I have a volunteer? Abe, you had your hand up first. So what's this first one here? I put on the belt of truth to protect me from the lies of the enemy. I walk in truth each day. Good job. Yeah. All right. Another volunteer to read Lysanias. I put on the breastplate of readiness to righteousness to protect my heart. I choose choose what I read, what is right and guard my heart from sin. All right. Next, come on, Karis. This one. This one. I put 
put on the helmet of salvation to protect my mind because of what Jesus did for me. I am forgiven and free. My mind is set on me, on him. There you go. Check. <laughs> All right, Coriana, we'll have you go next. I put on the shoes of peace to pair prepare my feet. I walk in peace and courage and I'm ready to share the good news everyone everywhere I go. I hold up the shield of faith to stop the the fiery arrows of the enemy. I choose to trust God and His promises for me. So I've got one more. This is our last one, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. Come on, Amir. Come help me out. <laughs> hey. I take the sword of the spirit, of the spirit, which is the word of God. A word of God. I speak the word. I speak the word. And know that it. That know I it is alive. Is alive. Active and active is sharper than sharper than any any double edged sword. Double edged sword. Very good. Thank you. So, that last thing that we read, what, do you guys, were you listening? What was he reading about? Zion? The sword of the spirit. And what did he say about that sword of the spirit? Anybody? What did he say about the sword of the spirit? Were you guys listening? You're thinking? It's sharper than what? What? A double-edged sword. A double -edged sword. Yeah. Okay, so are we talking about a real sword? What are we talking about? What are we? What are we talking about? The spirit. But what is? What did we say was our weapon? The Bible. The Bible. And why did we say that the Bible was our weapon? Zion. God spoke the word. And who do we need to defeat our enemy? What do we need to defeat our enemy? God's word, right? Okay, that's why God's word is our weapon, is our sword. And what makes God's word sharper than any two-edged sword? We read a verse. My, my tablet's not working here. Why is God's word sharper than any two-edged sword? What did we say that, that a sword does? Lysanias? Yeah. And what does, so we talked about, um, it gets deep down into you, right? So God's word, it seeps down into your heart, into your soul, into your spirit, just like a really sharp sword, okay? So we made, a craft last week. You guys remember that? Yeah. What did we make? Sword. And what did we say about those swords? Sword we made swords of the spirit. But what did what did I say about those swords? Do we use them on each other? No. no. Do we use them to beat and poke and no. and hit each other and fight each other, sword fight each other? No. So do we use the Bible to hit and, and fight and and no. So what are what are those swords for? Or what do they represent, I should say? They represent what? They are a symbol of what? 
Yeah, of our, they are swords of the spirit and they are symbolic of, of God's word of our Bible. You guys are, where did our swords go? Huh? If you guys want to go follow um, Deacon Jordan, you guys can go grab your swords if you made one last week, and we'll kind of walk around so everybody can see our swords of the spirit that we made. So we, like we mentioned, we made these swords to remind us to always, always carry God's word, right? Because that, that's what we use to fight off our enemy, right? All right. You guys didn't show everybody. You guys just came this way and sat out. You're supposed to show everybody your swords of the spirit, right? second and third Sunday um, during the message to kind of give the, the kids a message during, you know, during, during when preachers are usually preaching to bring something to their level, you know. Um, so please, 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 please bring your children out. Second, third Sundays, and then following after church on those Sundays, we do have youth choir rehearsal. Um, and I will tell you, these kids are learning. Because Amir, how old are you? You're five, so so for the past couple of weeks, I've had the privilege of just going out there because I usually go out there and you know watch the doors, make sure the kids are okay. And second Sunday, I was out there, and Sister Desiree had the kids partner up and and try to come up with the answers for the the the, the armor of God. And Cares um, <laughs> and Lice or Cares and Amir were partners together. Can't I hand the paper to Amir to fill out? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. And then, so last week I had the opportunity to work with the, or I had him go out there to work with something and also again keep watching the doors and things. And Desiree, uh, Sister Desiree said, okay, everybody take their papers and everybody work alone. And so, again, Amir and Cares, they're like partners in crime out there for some way, somehow. So Amir looks at Cares and is wanting help. She's like, it's on her own. I said, well, Karen, well, I said, come here, Mira. I'll, I'll help you, you know. And when I tell you this kid, I, was just, I said, you're going to come up with it on your own. I'm not going to help you. You have to, I'll, I'll write your answers. And when I tell you this kid, he's five years old, and he got, I think, if not all, all of them, most of them. And the one that cracked me up the most was the shield of faith. Because he said, the shield of, I said, what's this one? He said, the shield of faith. I said, what? <laughs> I don't speak baby very well, or not baby, I don't speak young kid very well. So I was like, what? Hey, hey. I was like, so I'm sitting there like, and I'm like asking people the same thing over and I was like, okay, man, I'm sorry. What did you say? And he did the, I'm mad he hit me with this. <laughs> and he, he did this to me, Faith. I was like, Faith, Faith, oh, he said, that's what I said. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm telling you, bring these kids out. Bring your kids out. Sister, Sister Desiree does a wonderful job. The ch children, I don't know what I said. Bring your children out um, um, because um, they are they do learn out there. They, and they're learning life lessons at their age level. And, I, and it's nothing against the word that's going on in here. It's nothing against that. It's not to take away from this. But we do have a program here that we're giving kids the opportunity to learn at their level, you know. So, um, so after that, but are there any other announcements? I know there's a lot of women's events happening. Do you have those? Because I don't have anything here. Just from the 14th through the 16th, I believe, or the 13th through the 16th of September, the Women's Convention okay. in uh, Des Moines. And this year we'll be honoring our state supervisor. She's been in office for 10 years, so we'll be honoring her. 
And then on that Saturday, we will have the um, lunch, the benefit luncheon, and um, the tickets for the benefit luncheon are fifty dollars. And if you need a ticket, please see me, and I can get you a ticket. Um, and that's usually a, a really nice event. But it's all to celebrate um, our uh, jurisdictional supervisor, who's been in office for ten years in the Iowa jurisdiction, Mother Lenora Carpenter. So let's keep that in mind. Are there any other, any other announcements? All right, so there's no other announcements. I'm gonna ask Elder Lysanias Broyles to um, introduce the speaker following the introduction of speaker. We're gonna have the youth choir, and then we're gonna go into our sermon. church and the future church. Amen. 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 And these children, are, they are, they're anxious to learn too. So this is why I say, let's be on our best behavior because these children will imitate us. And we want them to be grow up, be decent young men and young women. At this time, I'm here to introduce the pastor of this great church, the Honorable Reverend Elder Kanez Boo. I think he's been passed here going on 11 years now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure these 11 years have been cake and ice cream. I'm sure he had a lot of sleepless nights and just wondering how he's gonna make the next level. But I believe God has sustained him. Our Lord is a man that loves us people, he loves the church, he loves his wife and his family. And he has done a good job here at Mount Olive. And after the children have sang their song or songs, would you be so kind to rest at your feet and receive this vessel of the Lord with a hearty amen. Amen? Amen. You can handle the choir.
inside. Oh, gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this day that you have blessed us to see, dear God. And we do declare, dear God, we will rejoice and be glad in it, dear God. We thank you for our children, dear God. We thank you for those hands, dear God, that work with our children, dear God. And God, we just trust and believe in you, dear God, that these children, dear God, will one day, dear God, know you as the Lord and Savior, dear God. Dear God, one day, dear God, they'll fulfill your divine purpose in their lives, dear God. Because your word said, train up a child the way that it should go. That when that child is older, it will not depart from you. And God, we trust that these children, dear God, they will not depart from the truth. And God, we give you thanks today. God, now, dear God, we ask you to allow your servant to decrease and that you would increase, dear God. We love you and we give you thanks. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. I truly thank God, amen, for this day. Thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. And I'm so thankful for our children. Amen. So thankful for our children. Many of you don't know, amen. If the truth be told, amen, we'll say, amen, we love to see our children, amen. We love to see them, amen. And many times we would rather see our children than our adults. You know why? Because children, wherever they are, children show that there is growth. If you go to a place and there is no children, that means now that guess what? Everything has become stagnated. And people just going on with their lives. But when we see children, children is a sign of growth. Children is a sign that reminds us, amen, that they are going into a place that men of us will not go into. Children remind us that they are the church of today and tomorrow. And the one thing that I like about children, they are very honest. If you want to know something, don't ask a child. So Deacon Thomas, don't you ask him, do you still look good? Because uh, <laughs> you may not like the answer. <laughs> hey Amen. Because they be honest with us. Hey Amen. So see, I can fool with DK, man. I can fool with him. Hey Amen. Because he loved children. Hey Amen. And even this morning, amen. And that's why I want to encourage the parents to let your children come out, amen. Let them come out to Sunday school. Let them come out to church, amen. Let them come out to whatever we have here at the house of God, amen. We've been even talking to the youth department about having a movie night. We've been talking about them, amen, sponsoring a hockey trip, man to go down and see a hockey game, amen. So our youth, amen, we have plans for them, amen. We don't just want them to think, amen, that serving God is all about just being in the house of the Lord and all bored and they can't go no places and they can't do this and they can't do that, amen. We have to be able to show our children, amen, that you can have fun and still serve God, amen. You can still go to a hockey game, amen and still serve God, amen. You can still go to a ball game and still serve God, amen. You can go see a movie and still stay saved, amen. I know, I know, I, for some of you, I messed some of you up, amen. Because some of you may believe, amen, you're so deep that we can't go see a movie and stay saved, amen. Yeah, you can stay saved and go to see a movie, amen. 
So I thank God, amen. And we have to train our children, amen, to know that, amen. And I thank God for the workers, amen. And I just want to encourage others, amen, to join in, amen, and help us with our children, amen. Because even this morning, I had to have a flashback, amen. And that's why I said you never despise small beginnings. Because most of you don't even know, I started teaching youth. Very little bitty kids. I don't even think they was five years old. And I still have that love today for children. And they challenged me. And even this morning, amen, I had to step in. And I had to put back on my youth hat in Sunday school, amen. But now, see, God gave me a little bit more wisdom now. So when I went back there to teach him and everything, I told him, I said, look, when we go out front, I'm gonna need y'all to be real good and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. But guess what? I said, now I have a little gift for you. Now, if you don't do right, you ain't getting this gift. So guess what? They came out. And they said what we were talking about. They even saw They even quoted a scripture. I said, thank you, God. And I know y'all were like, how did Pastor Boone get them to do that so quick? Amen. God had given me a little bit of wisdom now. Amen. So I, you know, kind of influenced them. But I thank God for them. Amen. And I just want us, amen, to continue to love on our children and love on one another. Because we're getting ready for the word of God. And whether you believe it or not, our children was in the word today. I'm going to have you turn to Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And then Matthew, the 4th chapter, verses 1 through 4. But I truly thank God for being saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. I ask Evangelist Boone if she would come and read those scriptures for us. Amen. First passage of scripture is found in Deuteronomy the eighth chapter, verses one through three. And it reads, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you and know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, but, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. The next passage is, Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses one through four. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone. Can you make it personal this morning, amen, and just repeat after me. I do not live by bread alone. 
Amen. You and I, we need to understand that in this day and hour, we do not live by bread alone. And I know many times you hear us come up, amen, especially as me, amen, and I maybe mention this scripture, amen. But beloved, we are living in perilous time. We are living in dangerous time. Yesterday, just listening to the news, amen, we see, amen, where someone will go in a Dollar Tree or a dollar store in Jacksonville, Florida. Innocent people just there to try to go to the shopping mall or to the dollar store, I should say, and end up going into eternity. So we are living in perilous time. We are living in dangerous time. And many of us, as believers, we are trying to make sense of why there's so much deception why is there so much hate? Why is there so much pain? Why is there so much suffering? Why are those who know the truth will accept and believe and follow a lie? Yeah. Why are so many people calling right wrong and wrong right? Mm -hmm. I know if you like me, amen, we're trying to figure this thing out. And believers, we could simply Answer this by saying we are living in the last days. God's word is being fulfilled and Jesus is soon to come. I believe this to be true. And why is it to be true? You and I must hold, we must obey, we must walk, and we must live the word of God. The Bible warns us about this time. So God is not surprised. You and I are surprised. But he allowed Isaiah to record these words over in the fifth chapter. Woe. And we see that word woe, amen. That's a strong warning. Woe. Unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drinks, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous for him. Beloved, if you do not know in this passage of scripture this morning, Jesus reminds us that we are in a spiritual battle. In the saints of God, we have the same, every, the same adversary that Jesus has, and that is the devil. We are in a battle, and we have the same adversary. Amen. And this is only for born again believers, amen, that have this adversary, the devil, amen. Jesus had this same adversary. And this is why the word tells us to be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may defile. The Bible goes on to tell us about our adversary, the devil. He said he is a thief. They're coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that ye may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. The Bible goes on to tell us, amen, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. I stopped by this morning to let you know salvation does not deliver us from this battle, but it equips us to win. You can let your neighbor know, tell them, hey, salvation does not deliver us from the battle, but it equips us to win. See, all of us, amen, we, we, we should be ready to shout right now, amen. We should be ready to shout if you're saved this morning, amen. Because
because we are in a battle. We are in a battle. And this is what Jesus tried to remind us, amen, when he went. Because he said he was led of the spirit into the wilderness. Amen. And when he went into the wilderness, amen, being led of the spirit, it said how he fasted. 40 days and 40 nights. And then said his old adversary, the devil himself, amen, but thinking in his own mind that Jesus must be weak because he'd been fasting 40 days. He'd been fasting 40 nights. He haven't had any food. He haven't had any water. Jesus has to be weak. And this is why Jesus allowed these words to be recorded for you and I. Because when we see in scripture, amen, he let us know, amen, right after these words were recorded. And after he had fasted, the Bible said the enemy was right. The enemy was right. Because Jesus himself confirmed and said, guess what? He was hungry. Look at the scripture. For 40 days out of fast, for 40 nights. Amen. So, Satan, you're not wrong. I am hungry. Because he confirmed it in verse 2. He said, and when he had fasted 40 days and for 40 nights, he was afterward a hungry. Yeah. But see, we got to remember that the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. But the spirit is willing. He didn't realize, amen, that why Jesus was there fasting, amen. Yeah, this old fleshly man may be weak, but you don't realize, amen, this spiritual man, amen, is now subject, amen, is now ready to plead the almighty God. I got more strength than what you think because now I have brought this old fleshly body under suggestion of the Holy Spirit. But yes, I'm hungry. But my flesh is weak. But the spirit man is women. Amen. We see these words recorded. Amen. And you and I have to understand in this day and hour, amen, that Jesus want you and I to respond to Satan just as he responded to Satan. Mm -hmm. Notice, I noticed something about the devil. Look how he approached Jesus. He said, Jesus, if thy be the Son of God. That's the first thing he asked him. If thy be the Son of God. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew who he is today. Jesus knew he was God, the only begotten Son. He knew his purpose. So even though he had been in the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights, Jesus knew even then that he was still fully divine. Say to my no, you, you, you see a man right here. You see a man that's walking in the flesh, but have you forgotten? I left my heavenly home to come and redeem man. I am still fully divine. See, he was still fully divine. And he was fully man. Jesus knew. See, and that's why when he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus knew he had the power to make those stones bread because he was fully God. Amen. He was fully man, but he was fully God. And we see many times in scripture, amen, even when the storm came up, amen, what did he tell the storm? Peace be still. I don't care how bad the storm was out there on the ocean. It could have been the worst hurricane ever. Could have been the worst whatever storm. But he said, peace be still. And because he was fully divine, guess what happened? Mother Nature, as we call her, had to obey. Amen. Had to obey. The storm had to cease. The waves and the wind had to cease. Because it goes all the way back to Genesis. What happened when he formed the world, him and his
his father. They tell me he spoke it into existence. So whenever he opened his mouth, it had to happen. So here is Satan telling Jesus, do you know who you are? Yeah. Hallelujah. Why is that so important? Because see, Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew who he is, amen, but Jesus knew his purpose because Jesus said, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. It is not God's will right now for me to turn these stones into bread. As hungry as I am, it's not God's will for me to do it. And he said, guess what? When I left my heavenly home, when I left being right next to the Father, and I took on this fleshly body, I didn't come down here to do my will. I came down here to do the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? He said, oh, in John 6 and 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believing on him may have everlasting life. And when I raise him up in the last days, I came that you may live. That's what my father sent me for. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now since Jesus knew who he was or who he is, the question now becomes, do you know who you are? Because see, when we're dealing with this enemy, amen, this adversary, we got to know who we are. Who are we? I don't know. Because we let the enemy tell us we nobody. Yeah, we do. We let the enemy tell us we a liar. Amen. We let the enemy tell us all kind of things. Amen. About us. Amen. And we start believing that stuff. But amen, my Bible tells me this right here. Say, guess what? If we have accepted Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he said, guess what? Mother, bros, don't tell me about who I used to be. Don't tell me about how you, you're a liar because that's all you remember me as, as a liar. Don't tell me about I'm a fornicator because that's the only thing you remember me as, amen. Don't tell me, amen, the only thing you know me as is a backbite, someone who calls confused, someone who's discord and discord, amen. Don't tell me about that, amen, after I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior because he said that I'm there for If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If you don't know me as a child of God, keep it to yourself. Because he said in his word, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. We better be careful what we are doing in this day and hour. That's the old man. But I'm now new. Hallelujah. I know who I am. But then guess what? If you don't know, amen, I'm going to give you some scripts in this morning. Amen. Because we all need to know that, guess what? Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. I'm a son of the Most High God. And not only that, he said that I'm a heir. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus Christ. He said, Many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Hallelujah. But then, amen. He let us know you are a chosen generation. You chosen for this time, Elder Boone. You chosen for this time, Deacon Thomas. 
because you're a chosen generation. All of a sudden here, you're chosen for this time. Then he said, because you're my son, you're my daughter, said you from a raw priesthood. You're royalty. Hallelujah. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people that ye shall show forth the praise of him which have called you. Look at him. Which have called you where? Where was I? He said you was out in darkness. Hallelujah. But now I come to this marvelous life. That's right. This marvelous life. I was in darkness. I was in sin. My whole life was black and I couldn't see. But now I come to the marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have mercy. See, amen, I thank God. Amen, I know who I am. Do you know who you are today? And you said, Pastor, why is that so important? Because see, when the enemy starts fooling with you, if you don't know that you're a child of God, he gonna drop one of them ideas in your mind. He gonna drop one of these thoughts. He gonna drop one of these suggestions. Because we see this what happened to Jesus. Because he let Jesus know, you've been fasting 40 days, you've been fasting for 40 nights, and I've been watching you, Jesus. And then Jesus yourself, you're going to declare that you're hungry. Now, since you declare that you're hungry, hallelujah, and you know who you are, you know that you have all power. Jesus, why go down to famous day? When you can make these rocks the best meal. But why not even do this, Jesus? Do you remember Jesus? Because I had him in this bone read Deuteronomy for a reason. Do you remember for 40 years a man in the wilderness that you fed your people from heaven with heavenly manner? And now you hungry. Why don't you feed yourself with this heavenly man? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. You and I, hey, man, because we're not going to get to you. I'm going to get to you because we about almost out of here. See, we got to understand in this day and hour that we are in a battle. And the only way that we're going to get the victory in this battle, we're going to have to be just like Jesus. Because I see how Jesus responded to Satan. Do you know you and I, we have to respond to Satan the same way? Because I believe I heard the children talking about a sword of the spirit. I heard them say it was like a two-headed sword. Amen. And then the Bible goes on and says that is nothing more than the word of God. But I heard him also, amen, it says powerful. You and I, we got to understand in this day and hour that we're going to receive the victory. We have to be just like Jesus. And why am I I'm talking like this, people? I'm talking like this because guess what? We got so much deception in this world. Do we know in this life right now, that is a movement to discredit the Bible. Everything that's written in the Bible, they are trying to discredit it. You know why they are trying to discredit? Because they said it was written by a man. That's what they said, Mother Griffin, it was written by a man. Mother Griffin, I stopped by here to tell the world and everybody here in Mount Island, it wasn't just written by me. My Bible said God moved upon holy me. Anybody could just wipe the script. You had to be holy. You had to have a relationship. 
unto vile affections. Amen. We got to understand, amen, a lot that we see going on, amen, is because people is calling right, wrong and wrong, right. Amen. People have gone about and continue to ignore God and don't want to acknowledge that God's word is true. Amen. And that God has put his word here for us to live by his word. Amen. So God said these are the consequence. I'm going to now let you believe that you want to believe that guess what? Even though when the doctor gave birth to you just like from the beginning because I said I created male and female. Amen. And back in those days and even in this day, ain't but one way to be able to tell which one you are. And guess what? We coming up in a world in the day and hour. Every week, they come up with some other kind of sex, panda sex, all these different things, amen. And they ain't doing nothing but confusing people. And God said, guess what? I'm going to let you believe that. I told you you was male or you was a female. But since you want to believe a lie, I'm going to let you believe a lie. Amen. Since you won't believe my word, when the right day in Genesis, on the sixth day, amen, he said, after I had created everything in this world, I waited to create my prize possession. I, re I waited to create mankind in my likeness and in my image. And then I made a difference. I said I created male and female because I created the woman because man was alone, amen. And I allowed Adam to fall asleep. And I took a rib from Adam and I created the woman because Adam is the one said, God, because this is what? Flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. This, 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 this thing that you just created is going to be called a woman. And we walking around in this day and hour letting people tell us all kind of stuff instead of telling people what is written. I ain't going against, I ain't going against none of them or what I say. I'm just telling you about what is written. You want to believe that? I'm believing what is written. Hallelujah. What is written? Hey Amen. He said he turned them over to it. Yeah. And see, saints, we have to understand when God do some things, amen, no matter how hard we pray, yeah. unless God have mercy, and that's why he tells us he have mercy on whom he will. Unless God have mercy, I don't care how hard we pray. Some things are not going to be reversed. Amen. Because God said, if I reverse these things, then I'm not God. Amen. If I accept that marriage is between Elder Broads and Elder Boone, I'm not God anymore. Yeah. Because he said, I cannot lie. He said, guess what? I just need you to look at nature. From the beginning, I spoke all the creation. Have I ever had to go back and tell the sun, sun, it's daytime. I need you to provide light. No, because he said, guess what? When I created the sun, I gave the sun a commandment. And I said, you're going to be the big light, and you're going to be the light for day. I ain't never had to go back and tell the sun again. Sun, I need you to shine, because it's daytime. I Moon, moon, you should be shining. You should be shining, moon, right now, because you're the small light. you for the nighttime. He said, I ain't never had to do that. Yeah. But look at us. We don't want to believe the word of God. And this is why I'm trying to get us to understand in this day and hour, amen. You and I, we have to stand on the word of God. If we're going to receive the victory in this day and hour, this is why Jesus gave us this passage of scripture. And he said, amen, it is written. 
Man does not live by bread alone. What was Jesus really trying to tell us? <laughs> Amen. Jesus was really trying to tell us because he the one that admitted that he was hungry. Church, we don't live by natural bread alone. I don't care how hungry we are, mother. Jesus was trying to let us know bread is not going to save us. This natural bread is not going to save us. This natural bread is not going to deliver you. This natural bread is not going to encourage you. It may take a little hunger pains from you, amen, but it ain't going to do nothing else for you, amen. And if we be honest to ourselves, amen, many health problems that we have, amen, is because of food. You know, let's just be real. Because I know myself, amen, the military, amen, because of MRE, amen, we preserved them for years, amen, and they give you these meals that they keep on the shelf. And they say that you can eat these meals they've been stored for about 10 years, amen, and then they give them to you, amen. But how do they preserve them? They preserve them in salt, amen, full of sodium. And is sodium good for you? No. That's why you see many people get out of the military, they suffer with high blood pressure. They suffer, amen, with diabetes, amen. They suffer with all kind of health, illness, amen, because of things like this. Amen. And the government know about it. That's why the government have the largest budget. Amen. In the U.S. Amen. The budget. Amen. For the military. Amen. Is the largest. Because they understand. And this is what I'm trying to tell us. Amen. In this day and hour. Amen. You and I have to know the word of God. If we are going to win if we are going to experience victory in this life, you and I are going to need to know the word of God. Because we have the same adversary, then I tell you, we have that same adversary, the devil. And the only thing the devil understands, amen, I don't care how much y'all speak in tongue, amen, because we are a tongue-talking church. I don't care how much you speak in tongue, amen. Your tongues ain't going to get the enemy off your back. Amen. But my Bible tells me this right here. Amen. If I want to get him off my back. Amen. Because I know y'all go to the end of this scripture. Y'all tell me y'all can resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. But what y'all forget. It takes some obedience. Amen. Before he will flee from you. And before you can resist him. Because the Bible said, submit yourself to the Lord. In other words, you got to obey what is written. You got to obey what is written. Amen. Don't come here, amen, asking for all these miracles and everything. If you're not willing to obey the word of God. If you're not willing to submit yourself. Because did he tell them that? In this passage of scripture, I think that Evangelist Boone read, he said, all the commandments which I command thee this day, should you observe to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your father. Hallelujah. And then he said, guess what? See, some of this stuff we're going through is just what? The trial will fail you. The trial of faith. Are we really going to hold on to what God is saying in this day and hour when it comes to what is written? And I say this to our children, amen. I want our children to know that when God created you, he created his best. Because he said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't let nobody put you down in school saying you ugly and you this and you can't do this and this. Because when God created you, he created you to be somebody. And he knew you to be somebody. And you need to be able to hold on to it. Amen. When the kids begin to bully you, just remember, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's not but one of me. And God, you created me. And because you created me, God, I am somebody. 
don't care what they telling me in school. Hey Amen. I am somebody. Because God, you created me. Hey Amen. And I was your prized possession. Because I'm a humanity. Hey Amen. You created me. Hey Amen. And we see. He said, and he hummed thee. And suffered thee to hunger. And fed thee with manna. Which thou knew it not. Neither did thy father know that he might make thee known, make make thee know the man do it not live by bread only. So today, saints, if you take anything out of this message today, I want you to remember as saints of God, we don't live by bread alone. But by every word that is written. That's why even on our affirmation of faith. We say it every Sunday. Because we believe the Bible to be inspired. It just wasn't any old man that wrote this. Amen. God moved upon holy men. Yeah. Amen. And then he tells us amen. Every scripture that God allowed. He said it was inspired by God. In other words one edition of the Bible said God breathed of a man to write those scriptures. And he says, for correction, for reproof, yeah. and for instruction. Yeah. Hallelujah. So standing all over the place this morning. Because God want you and I to know that you and I do not live by bread alone about what is written. And we have to hold on to it in these, lead, these last and evil days. And every time Satan approaches us, go see, I'm going to give all of you a secret. You've heard me say it before. Satan can't make us do anything. Did y'all know that? Satan can't make you do anything. He's defeated. He is defeated. He can't make us do anything. But you know what Satan can do? The Bible lets us know. He can give us a thought. He can give us an idea. Or he can give us a suggestion. And once he plays those in our mind, then you and I have to act upon it. And if we don't act upon it, we have to be just like Jesus. Jesus didn't act upon it. What did Jesus do? He rejected it. This is what God wants you and I to do. Never accept what the devil brings to us in an idea, thought, or suggestion. Reject it. I don't care how good it sounds. Reject it. The grace is an eternal father. You see us in this hour, God. And God, we live it in perilous time, God. God, we live it in a time where we see so many people calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. We see so many people who have once walked as your children, dear God have allowed the enemy to deceive them, dear God. They have taken down and have made the choice to believe a lie instead of the truth. Now, God, as we stand before you, God, let us examine our own heart. God, you know What's in each and every one of our hearts, dear God? God, I'm asking you that you will reveal our heart. Reveal it to us, dear God. Because, God, we want to be the ones, dear God, that stand on what is written. No matter what the world decides to do, God. God, we want to be that remnant. We want to be the ones that stand on what is written. 
Not only do we want to stand on what is written, dear God, but God, we want to know your word because you have told us in your word to study your word, dear God. Because you don't want us, dear God, to not know your word, dear God. You don't want us to be ashamed, dear God. But God, as we study your word, you say you want us to rightly divide. Because you don't want us to be deceived, God. Help us, dear God, to rightly divide your word, dear God. And God, once we have done these things, dear God, help us now, dear God, to accept your word and to obey your word, dear God. It doesn't help us, dear God, if we just know your word, dear God. We have a world that plenty know the word, dear God, but God, they're not willing to accept it and to live by it, dear God. God, help us to accept it and to live what is written, dear God. God, we give you thanks today. God, we ask you to look on Brother Vic, dear God. We thank you for the testimony, how you're working a miracle in his life, dear God. And God, we ask you that you would continue to touch, that you would continue to heal his body, dear God. You continue to do the work, dear God. You be glorified, dear God. There are others, dear God, that are sick in their body, dear God. God, we ask you that you would touch it, that you will heal, dear God. Those that are in our bereavement, dear God, we ask you that you would comfort and that you would give peace, dear God. Look on our children, dear God. God, you have mercy, dear God. Come each and every day, dear God, as they go out, dear God. God, we ask you that you would cover them under your blood, dear God. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, dear God. And God, we ask you that you would touch others hard in here, dear God, that they would come and they would assist, dear God. We're working with our children, dear God. God, we give you thanks. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Now, there may be someone out there that don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. We ask in you that you will repeat after me. Let Jesus know that you are son. Lord, I'm a sinner, and I heard your word today, and I believe what is written. I believe that you sent Jesus to redeem me that I may live again. And I thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood on Calvary for the remission of my sin. I thank you now, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sin because I asked you this morning to forgive me for my sin because I'm a sinner. And now that you have forgiven me, I now thank you for becoming my Lord and Savior. This morning I can declare that I'm your child. I'm your child. I'm that royal priesthood that holy nation, that peculiar people, and I thank you. Now, if that's you, we ask you that you would ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. We thank God for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. We thank God for everything that God has done. Amen. And let us hold on to the word of God in this day and hour. Amen. We're about to lead today, amen. And we just want, amen, us to continue to love one another and to pray amen. for one another. Because as we said, we are in a battle. And in this battle, amen, God gives us two weapons. One is the sword of what we call the spirit, the word of God, the spirit of the word. And the other one is prayer. Amen. We can pray. Say, man should always pray and not faint. Amen. Because I believe, amen, when we pray, I believe God hears us, amen. And I thank God for it. So with that being said, amen, we get ready to go home, amen, and just thank God for each and every 
one of you. So at this time, you will stand. Amen. God, even now, we have received your word, dear God. And I have you have reminded us, dear God, in this hour, the importance of us, dear God. Knowing your word, knowing what is written, dear God, that we will be able to apply it to our situation, dear God, and that we'll be able to stand on it and we'll be able to obey it, dear God. God, we give you thanks this morning, dear God. And God, even now, God, we ask you, dear God, that you will bless the offering, dear God. Bless the hands, dear God, that we give in this house, dear God. God, we ask you and trust in you for your increase, dear God. And God, we ask you that you will bless them a hundredfold, dear God, and that you will multiply this offering to accomplish that that you will have it to accomplish, dear God. And God, even now, dear God, we lift up those, dear God, that will be traveling, dear God. God, we ask you for traveling mercy, dear God. Let them arrive at their destination safe, dear God. And God, we ask you, dear God, that you would allow them, dear God, to relax, dear God, and to enjoy themselves, dear God. And then, God, we ask that you will bring them back safely, dear God. And God, while they away, dear God, let them know, dear God, that you are still their God, dear God, and let them remain safe, saved, dear God. And dear God, wherever there's an opportunity, from the witness, dear God, you give them that boldness, dear God, to share, dear God. God, we thank you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, it is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Consider yourself this piece.